Hey everyone, I'm Chris Riley, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Radiation. Today, we're gonna to be specifically talking about the thumb, even more specifically, the first metacarpal and the injuries we can have with that bone. So this mechanism of injury happens when a patient's thumb is held in flexion, and they have some sort of force going down the metacarpal, causing a fracture or injury down here at the base of that first metacarpal. And that can lead to either an extra articular fracture, which is above the articulating surface of the base of the first metacarpal, or an intraarticular fracture, which does involve this articular surface of the first metacarpal, where it meets the articular surface of the trapezium. So extra articular fractures are typically a transverse fracture or an oblique fracture not involving the articular surface. Most of these can be managed with a closed reduction and splinting or casting. There are a select few that can be unstable and may require pinning. This is a key variant of that extra articular fracture of the first metacarpal, and this is known as an epibasal fracture, otherwise known as a pseudo Bennett. And that's because it looks like a Bennett but it does not involve the articular surface of that base of the first metacarpal. Now let's talk a little bit more about intraarticular fractures. And there are two that I want you to remember. First is the Bennett fracture. The Bennett fracture is a two-part intraarticular fracture. This involves a fracture at the base of that first metacarpal, as well as a small fragment on the volar lip of that carpal metacarpal joint. And there's a really strong tendon attached to a muscle known as the abductor pollicis longus that can pull that fracture fragment down, making this quite unstable and very difficult to reduce. You can splint it, but you should be talking to your orthopedic colleagues about possible pinning or open reduction internal fixation. And the second intraarticular fracture I want you to know is the Rolando fracture. And this is described as a comminuted intraarticular fracture. The classic pattern here would be a Y or T fracture line involving both a dorsal and a volar segment of that fracture. These fractures are highly unstable and require open reduction internal fixation most of the time. Surgical stabilization is key in these intraarticular fractures because if they are not treated, they can lead to long-term complications like terrible arthritis, chronic pain, and grip weakness. So to recap, we have our extraarticular fractures, such as the pseudo-Bennett or the epibasal fracture, then we have our intraarticular fractures, which is going to be the Bennett and the Rolando. Both of those should have orthopedics on board for that open reduction internal fixation. <laughs>